Hey, good evening. We are live and I'm pulling this up on my phone and that, my friends, is why I'm not looking at you right now. So I, you know, I um, wanted to come on and talk about um, something that I think a lot of people, including myself, I'm not judging in any way, but a lot of people don't really step back and take a look at the big picture in their life and um, and really appreciate just how blessed they really are in life. And, um, you know, I, I work with a lot of amazing people on a daily basis. In fact, I got to say this, last night, in the Grow Live Academy, I do a coaching call every Thursday evening and try to have guests come on every now and then. And um, I know Periscope's going away. What's going on, bro? Good to see you. Um, your picture's not showing up, though. That's weird. Um, yeah, Periscope's going away. What's up, Larry Schneider? Good to see you, bro. So, you know, a lot of people focus on their problems and they don't praise their blessings. They don't look at what how they're really, truly blessed. Ernest O'Dell, my brother, thank you. I appreciate it. Scott Ricard is in the house. Bruce Mills, how in the world are you, man? Thank you for sharing. I really appreciate anybody that is sharing this out. Ken, so incredibly blessed. Forbes Riley was on with Christopher and Scott over two hours. That is so awesome, man. That is so awesome. So, you know, a lot of people, though, spend their time focusing on their problems and not their blessings. And here is something that is a real key to life. Whatever you focus on expands. If you focus on being stressed about something, it expands. If you focus on being blessed, it expands. Teresa, haven't been able to get you on the... Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. So I have a very special guest, a dear friend of mine, a good, great client of mine, Um and just more important than him being a client, he is a really, really good friend of mine. I have him sitting in the green room, and um, I, I'm going to bring him in here in a second. But I just wanted to say, man, y'all, focus on your blessings, and they will expand. The more you focus on the blessings you have in your life, the more that things will expand and grow for you. The more you focus on negativity, and here... Grant Cardone came. You. Grant Car why is my watch talking to me? Grant Cardone came up with this bracelet that I love. <laughs> uh, it might offend somebody, but you know that's not on me. That's on you. Check it out. That's a bracelet. Like if you're focused on being a whiner about how things don't go well for you, maybe you should consider focusing on your blessings. So let me bring my brother, my dear friend, my buddy, my pal, Doug Wing into the house. Doug! Hi, Ken. How are Dude. you? How are you, my friend? <laughs> I'm, I'm great. Teresa says, oh, my God. <laughs> she said, oh, my God. So they're available on Grant's website, grantcardone.com. You can buy those bracelets. I used to, when a client, a potential client would say, well, Ken, I'm not sure. I'm looking at a couple of other companies. I'm not sure if I, if I want to do business with you or them. I would hand them one of those. I'd hand them one of these bracelets right here. <laughs> Wow. What's it going to take to get you to do business with me? I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I never did that. <clears throat> so Doug, Doug and I were talking and, and I said, dude, I'm going to do a live stream. You want to jump on for a little bit with me? And he said, yeah, I'd love to. And, and he had no idea what I was going to talk about though. <laughs> Neither did I, but I just thought, you know what, Doug, you are a a blessed man. For those those who don't know who you are, let me introduce you. Um, Doug Wing is 
of the wing family. Um, he, he, um, he, his father was how is how wing and Hal is the founder and creator of the little giant ladder and, and, and Doug, um, after your father passed away, I think you said in 2012, that's correct. Yes. That you and your brother ran the company and continue to build the company and grow the company. And now today it's like the third largest ladder company in the world. And, um, you played a big role in that and, and man, dude, like you are a blessed man. You know what it's like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is a great topic tonight, Ken, because, um, everyone has blessings and, um, you know, of course we need to focus on the positives and, and, and not the negatives. And it's hard. I mean, you know, you got to stay away from the news and things like that. And, and just focus like we've been talking about, and like you started the show is just focus on the positive because we all have blessings and we need to remind ourselves of those blessings every day. Oh yeah. Ernest's birthday today. And I did tell him I happy. I didn't birthday. know that. I didn't even see that. Ernest, happy freaking birthday. Ernest, let me ask you a question. How many people on a live stream today said happy birthday to you live to thousands of people, man? So happy birthday, brother. I'm I'm really glad that you're you're here. And He's Jose Garza shared this out. Thank you. So yeah, dude. So being blessed, like, look, I know that you didn't get any handouts in life. You you um you told me you've been on my show before. You were on my show and you told the story of of, you know, you and your wife having kids and being broke, <laughs> being close to broke. Right. Yeah. You've, you've been through it. You've struggled through your way to success, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, we talked about, Oh, Hey Larry, thank you so much. Yeah. I, I, I think I remember telling you that story about working for my dad and man, my dad busted our rear ends and it seemed like he pushed us even harder than the other people, you know, the other employees that we had working for us. And, and now that I look back and I'm so grateful that he did that. Um, and he made us just do all the, the, the worst jobs and, and probably paid us less than anybody else. But it, you know, you learn, you just learn a lot from, and eventually, you know, he would, we would be able to move up the company and, and uh, you know, he prepared us for it by, by having us do everything in the business and, and, um, man, I'm so grateful for just the opportunities that I had at Little Giant and to be taught by one amazing dad who was, who was just a phenomenal um, businessman and father and wonderful guy. Yeah. Humanitarian. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy, dude, you got to tell the story. Uh, I know I, like this. Here's, here's the thing. Right in the middle of thinking this is the worst possible day of my life and things could not like things, things. I mean, there's so many people that struggle with this, dude. Like they don't understand how blessed they actually are. And then God shows up and sends a a, a, a little dude. He was a, a little dude, right? Your dad. Yeah. Very sure. Yeah. About five eight, yeah, short yeah, guy. Yeah, it's about five eight, and and he goes, I'm six foot, so um, not not that much taller. But so so your dad goes into the hospital because he heard about somebody having had an accident. The guy's got to be laying there worried about. I'll let you tell what what happened, but hospital bills and everything else, and you know, tell that story because that is an absolutely amazing story about. Your dad, who focused on blessings in life, focused on building and blessings, and he really focused on helping other people. Yeah, he had this unique ability to, I don't know how he knew when people were um, in trouble or knew them. In fact, as you know, I'm writing a book right now about him and his life. And, and as I do these interviews, I, I hear these stories and I'd never heard this story before. So I go and interview this couple. He actually worked for us for quite some time. The, the gentleman did. And his wife worked at the bank that my father uh, banked at. And, you know, he so she said, Steve, tell him the story about when you were in the hospital. And um, Steve says, well, I was I got in that accident and your dad came and visited me at the hospital. And that was the story. And she goes, no, Steve, let me tell the story. <laughs> and, um, so I mean, 
here we are in this beautiful cabin up by the golf course in Springville, Utah, I'm interviewing these people. And she said, uh, Steve was in this really bad accident, uh, industrial accident. And um, th this machine he was working on, uh, there was a problem and it, uh, something like it, had an, it, uh, it kind of exploded and there was shrapnel uh, that sent shrapnel and it went into his body, into his chest and things. But the worst part was it, it blew, it almost blew off his leg from the knee down. And so he gets rushed to the hospital wow. and, um, you know, the, he's in the, the ICU and they're working on him. They're trying to save his leg and his wife's there and she's holding his hand, sitting by him uh, in the, in, you know, in, on, in his hospital bed. She's sitting there holding his hand and, and kind of trying to comfort him. And she goes, all of a sudden, out of the blue, your dad just shows up. And she goes, they were just shocked. And she goes, Hal, how did you get in here? And he goes, oh, it was easy. Uh, I just told him I was his brother. And, you know, my dad <laughs> just had a way of getting around. You know, if you've ever tried to get into ICU lately, I mean, you know, they don't let just anybody in there, right? You have no, to be right. immediate family. So, so the next part of the story is real interesting. You know, nobody noticed that uh, Steve was, you know, that when he had this accident, his face was black and his arms and hands were black. And, you know, nobody had time to clean him or anything because they were worried about his leg and trying to make sure he was stabilized and save his leg and his life. And she says, I'll never forget your dad went and found a washcloth with soap and water. And she goes, he gently washed um, Steve's face down and um, washed his arms and hands and cleaned him. And she said, he leaned down to Steve and whispered in his ear, you really are my brother, Steve. And wow. when, when you get out of here, you will have a job with me at Little Giant. And he left. Now, the story kind of continues because, you know, Steve lost his leg. He had to have it amputated. Wow. And of course, he was depressed. He lost his job. These people that he worked for treated him like crap. I mean, they didn't even visit him. They didn't call him. And um, so he loses his job. He loses his job, loses his leg. And he said, the very first person that called me, Again, how did my dad know when he was out of the hospital? He said, the first person that called me was Hal Wing. And he, you know, he goes, I answered the phone and your dad said, Steve, you know, are you ready to come to work for me? And Steve says, Hal, I lost my leg. There's no way I could work for you. And my dad said to him, Steve, can you answer the phone? And he said, yeah, Hal, I can do that. And he said, well, you're going to come to work for me in customer service just let me know when you're ready and you have a job. And Steve Curtis worked for us for probably 15 to 20 years and retired wow. from the plant. Amazing guy. I mean, I don't know how he knew all this stuff or figured out how to talk, you know, to who needed help, but he did. You know, that's the thing is, is, is your dad and Samuel Sneed says it right here. He had, it sounds like your dad, because you sent me, you know, you sent me the, the, cause I'm helping you with a bunch of stuff too. And, and you, so you sent me the, um, kind of manuscript the, of some stuff that had been put together. And I'm reading this going, are you serious? Like, okay, listen, I, and this isn't to this, this show's not all about your dad, but I, I do want to talk about this man because your dad, you know, there are people in this world who say, Oh, I'm a good faithful spiritual person or I'm a Christian or I'm a this or I'm a that, but you, you don't, you don't, you don't hear about them blessing other people. Oh. And it sounds to me like your dad, and I'm not saying that's everybody, but your dad was looking for ways to bless others in life. Yeah. I, I truly believe that he, when he prayed every day, he, you know, he asked God, you know, who should I help today? Who can I help today? And because he had this gift to be able to be, you know, figure out who needed help. And, uh, and um, so the Steve guy, he's, he tells the story. He said, your dad sent me out and to do all these things to help other people. And he goes, he always wanted it done anonymously. He goes, one day I, he goes, your dad called me and meet me at this address. He goes, I show up. And he said, Steve, look at this guy's roof. He needs a new roof. And he goes, knock on his door, tell him that someone is going to buy him a new roof. Don't tell him who it is. And 
he said, your dad was gone. He was just gone. And so he goes, I'm knocking on this guy's door. The guy answers the door. He says, well, what do you want? You know, and he goes, uh, somebody's going to buy you a new roof. And the guy's like, is this a joke? And he goes, no. Oh. He goes, he goes, I can't tell you who it is, but this guy wants to buy you a new roof. He, he knows that you need it. And the guy's like, okay. And he's like, okay, let's, what color shingles do you want? And, and Steve took care of it. And so again, wow. it was just incredible that way, you know? I love the story about the um, being in the car dealership. You oh yeah, that? yeah, that couple. Yeah, one. Yeah, tell tell yeah. that one, man. Well, he was again. This is I was interviewing another employee, and I'd never heard this story before. Mm-hmm. But um, there's my dad's at this Nissan dealership, and it used to. This is a while ago. It was it used to be Dotson. Do you remember that? Jeez, and, yeah, it's so, been a while. Yeah, so my dad's at this, you know, Dotson Nissan dealership, and he's in there doing something. He had a truck or something and, and he sees this young couple that's there and they're buying a new car and he goes, Hey, you know, you guys are getting a new car and they go, yeah, we just got married. And, and, um, you know, we're, you know, we're trying to qualify for a car. Yeah. And, um, my dad says, well, I'll tell you what, uh, whatever car you guys can qualify for, I'll pay for half of it. And he walked off and he said to the salesman, uh, you know, just let me know what it is and I'll take care of half of it. And they were blown away. He didn't even know who these people were. Never met him before in his life. Just like the guy in the hospital. He didn't know him. He knew him, but he did. He barely oh. knew. Him. They weren't really good, that good of friends. And um, later they became friends. My dad served on the mayor. Uh, I mean, as a mayor of Springville. And Steve, actually, he 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 put him on as a, as a, uh, a councilman when somebody left. But he wow. knew of him. Um, he knew, of, of course, of his wife at the bank. But again, I don't know how he found out that Steve was even in that accident. It was incredible. Wow. That dude, you know, it's it's <clears throat> and and that's the thing. And I'll bet you I'd bet anything that the more that your dad helped others, the more he was blessed, the more he received back financially, even I'm, I yep. mean, for in, in anything. Right. People get this this notion that they that they have X amount of dollars to their name, or they have whatever, and if I part with too much of it, then it won't. I, I'll I'll be in a deficit. And I don't think your dad looked at it that way. He thought, I, I'm not even sure he thought. Well, if I give, I'll be blessed back. I think he just was like, I'm just going to give because that's that's who I am. Yeah, he had this um, belief. He told me this before. He said, the money that we have really isn't our money and um, it belongs, you know, it came from God and it belongs to him. And he he told me, he said, when I die, he goes, I know I'm going to have to answer to God. Um, you know, God's going to ask me, what did you do with all the blessings that I blessed you with? You know, did you just blow it on yourself or did you help other people? Well, he he definitely had a nice car collection when he died. <laughs> he, he did have a nice car collection, but but he helped a lot of people, man. He helped so many people, and when he passed away, we had the line to funeral, you know, home was just. I mean, this was in the summer in August, and it was hot, and it went around the block, and people would come up and say, "Man, your dad paid for my son's college. Your dad." you know, paid for my son's two year mission. Your dad bought us a car. Your dad bought us a house. I mean, we're like, what? We didn't know any of this stuff. And he did it all anonymously, which is really, really the way that, you know, it should be yeah. done. And um, we didn't know until afterwards. And we were like, wow, we, we really had incredible parents, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you tell, I can't I, look and somebody just said it. I put it up on screen here, Scott Ricard said, can't wait for your book to be completed so I can get a copy. Hey, anybody watching, listening, just to, these are just a couple. I've read a bunch of bunch more and Doug lived it. Like imagine all the freaking stories of, of, of how wing and what he, cause dude, you told me about the secret envelopes at Christmas and the, I, yeah. I and, and people don't even know about that. Like, dude, it's crazy. Drop a one in the comments if if you think this is going to be an unbelievably good book. Just drop a one. I want to see a one. Drop a one. Doug, you can see the comments, by the way, at the upper right hand corner. Just click live comments. Oh, I didn't. I can't. I didn't know that. Let me let me click on that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I couldn't see yeah. anything, and I was like, 
and so. and and your dad look at all these ones coming in dude wow <laughs> look at that so you're and and drop a drop a, another one if you're gonna get a copy of it when it comes out so your dad but that's what I, this is this I, I i wanted to do a show to help people realize you know that and the title of this show tonight is are you blessed or stressed it is a choice you get to choose you get to choose whether you can be in the middle of there's a there's a wonderful book written called man's search for meaning and and that book is is written by victor frankel my gosh dude are you seeing all the ones yeah i'm seeing them. <laughs> you just sold a thousand books and your book's not even out yet that's crazy. Ah, oh, can I get a signed copy? Doug, yeah, you know what? I'm going to help Doug with, with some of the marketing on this. And definitely, yes, you'll be able to get a signed copy. Yeah, uh, if I have good. to fly to Arizona and force him to sign it, I will. So, so, but, you know, think about, I want everybody to think about this. You know, we're, we're, we're all blessed. We all are. If you're alive you're blessed. If you're dead, you're blessed. If you're dead and listening to this, drop a one. I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would freak out if somebody that I know is dead dropped a one. But anyway, so, but you know, think about this while you're here, what do you think is most important? Do you think it's, 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 it's what you can buy for yourself or what you can do to bring joy to others? What do you think? You're asking me, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes, for sure. I mean, look, I've been blessed. I've been so successful uh, and just been blessed to have a wonderful mentor and father. And, uh, you know, the things that I remember about my dad were not the things he had, the houses he had, the cars he had, but these wonderful stories of people that he helped. And um, I'm doing the very best I can to to live, to fill his shoes, which, you know, he only had size seven feet, but I'm telling you, the guy was a giant of a man and um, he was just incredible. And, you know, one thing about my dad is we, you know, the company went up and down several times and there was a lot of, it wasn't easy, but I never once saw my dad ever afraid or, or ever get low on his attitude. He always said, we're, we've always made it. We're always going to make it. We've been blessed and we will make it through this. And we always did. He was just, he was one guy that never wavered in his belief and um, man, yeah. he was rock solid. You know, I, I know also that he was very eccentric and, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and a little bit of a crazy man. I mean, you told, you've told me stories about being out on dirt bikes with him and, and, you know, he's just zipping past everyone and, and, and he enjoyed life, man. He lived life to its fullest. Is that true? Oh, yeah. I mean, one of my buddies used to work in a motorcycle shop. He goes, I remember your dad coming in with a full length mink coat. And he goes, he's got like a beard. And he goes, he's got gold chains. And he says, man, your dad was just like, he goes, we all just thought your dad was so cool. I mean, he, he just, he was his own guy, right? And um, he, wow. you know, he just lived his own life. But man, he had fun. And I, I honestly, he only made it to 72. But I don't think my dad would have changed anything. And, um, he just, he loved life. He lived life to the fullest. He went dude, 110%. Dude, he was go, crazy. go get, go get that jacket. I want you to show everybody that jacket. Which one? The Indian one? Yeah. Show everybody that jacket. That is wow. such a cool. Just go grab it real quick and bring it back. Yeah, well, was, all right. I'll go get it. <laughs> you guys are not going to believe this jacket. It is so flipping cool like it, it'll show you how his dad just had this amazing just spirit about him and 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 i never even got to meet meet how wing but I, I i feel like i i i know him through his son doug so um charles coachman here oh you're wearing it hold on man hold on look at that stand up so everybody can see that look at that thing man that is freaking awesome look at that <laughs> I love it, man. That is so amazing, dude. That is so cool, man. That's what I'm talking about. Like, dude, that takes a huge personality to wear that. Yeah. 
Well, he, it, you know, what's cool about this jacket, it smells like my dad, you know? And so I put it on, it's kind of, wow. I don't know, it's just kind of sentimental, but yeah, I mean, he, he was uh, very unique, like you said, eccentric, you know? Um, and, uh, but just a hoot to be around, you know? Well, Teresa said you wear it well. Doug. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit short in the sleeves, but, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. How did you find that? It's it's his, it was his it was his father's Joe. Wow, Joe yeah. must have just jumped on, man. We're talking about Doug's father, Hal Wing, the founder of Little Giant Ladder Company. And I have what do I have? Three? I think I have three or four Little Giant three three Little Giant ladders. You sent me one of them. It's a nice yeah. ladder, man. The new King Combo, yeah. Yeah, it's super nice. Um, Charles says, damn, that could have been made by my family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Joe, how is what Indy? I get it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if this is like Daniel Boone or Davy Crockett or half of half, half of each. I don't know. It's kind of interesting, but yeah, that is such a cool jacket, dude. So, you know, when you talk about focusing on, um, you know, we get to choose whether we're blessed or stressed. And that's what this is about. Are you blessed or are you stressed? You do get to choose that. And what you focus on in your thoughts is what will what you'll feel. I mean, eventually it becomes a feeling. I don't remember all the steps, you know, thoughts become, you know, whatever. Somebody smarter than me type it in. I'm not, I'm not remembering all of it, but but you know, eventually your thoughts become your external world and, and whatever you focus on expands, dude. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you believe that? I totally do. And the one thing too, that people need to remember is it's also Ken, how we react when things happen too. you know, um, a lot yeah. of people, when things happen, they feel sorry for themselves or how come this happened to me? Or um, I, you know, we need to really try to focus on, you know, what can I learn from this? Um, but, uh, yeah, I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, yeah. we, it's all, you know, my dad used to have this little saying, he said, sometimes we all need a checkup from the neck up. Right. Yep. Yep. And, um, yeah. Amen, dude. I agree. I can't wait for your, your book to come out, bro. Your book's going to yeah. be, it's going to be amazing, dude. It's going to be amazing. Well, and I, I've read some of it already. I know it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. And it's amazing because of Halloween. And um, we, again, we would have nothing. I would have nothing. My family would have nothing without the sacrifice and the hard work of, of my father. And, and um, I, 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 you know, I acknowledge that every day and I'm so grateful for, for everything that he did for us. Yeah. Well, but you know what, man, I, I, I mean, I hear what you're saying and, and I, I, I agree. Justin. <laughs> I know Justin loves it. That's that's right up his alley. So I I agree. Um, however, I will say this. I've gotten to know you really, really, really well. And um, <clears throat> you know, you're a pretty smart dude and you're a really, really good dude. So I think you you would um you would have figured out you would have come up with something, something else, a step yeah. tool to sell <laughs> or something. I don't know. Well, again, you know, the theme for tonight is I am so blessed in, in, in just every area of my life. And, uh, I mean, I've got a new house that I'm sitting in right now and, um, yeah. and I'm just so That's great for, for, uh, just everything I have. And, um, a big part of that is, is because of my dad and his sacrifices for us and his example and the things he taught us. And, um, mm. I'm just so grateful for what I have and for great friends like you and Jeffrey who have, you know, helped me with this book. I mean, I wouldn't have done this book without, you know, your help and Jeffrey's and yeah. saying the story needs to be told and, and this is going to be wonderful. And, and, uh, I'm just very grateful for both of you and for, for, uh, yeah, the Justin, that was a big, <laughs> that was fun. fun. But by you know, the way, all the single ladies, eligible bachelor right there, <laughs> Doug Wing, eligible bachelor. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta like 
Maybe, yeah, and maybe with the jacket, you know, it might help me, you know. Out. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine riding around on your Harley with that? Like, those things would snap yeah, you your face. Clapping in the breeze, man. This is what my dad, he'd, he'd ride his Harley with this thing. and Would he really? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I would think those things would smack you in the face. No, you're gonna be out here like this. They wouldn't. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, why did Doug move to Arizona? Great question. Well, Ernest, the number one reason was is because it was about 72 degrees today. And so, um, right. yeah, I really love it here. Now, I haven't been here for a summer yet, so people say, hey, it's going to be warm. But, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'd rather be in the warm than in the cold. So, Yeah. Did you play golf today? I haven't played golf since I've been here. I've been working on this house and um, tomorrow I think I'm going to ride my motorcycle. So are you with that yeah. jacket on? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Thinking that about is... my dad. Yep. Huh? Thinking about my dad as I'm riding. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So awesome. Is he an American? Yeah, he's American. Oh, with the, is the jacket throwing you off. So, yeah, I mean, dude, it's, um, yeah, it was five degrees in the Utah mountains. I'm sure it's 24 degrees in Ohio right now. Did you guys get snow today or? Uh, you... We got more, more snow last night. We're supposed to be getting even more. And Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. We got, I'll bet you we have close to a foot of snow on the ground right now. Holy right cow. Now. I don't miss that. Yeah. Yeah. So you were you you were on that call last night. We had um, in the Grow Live Academy last night. We had the great Kyle Wilson, who was Jim Rohn's business partner. Kyle was the founder of Jim Rohn International, and um, he he was man. That was did you you were there? It was amazing. Yeah. I'm a big Jim Rohn fan. I've got some of his recordings on my um, iTunes. That yeah I, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I listen to those all the time when I was in sales and, and when I'm driving. And one thing people don't know about Jim Rohn is he liked dirt bikes. And um, so I studied his, his life a little bit and he actually rode dirt bikes up in Idaho. And wow. I thought that was cool. But he's, his storytelling was amazing. And the, my favorite story about him is when he was completely broke and he, he lied to the Girl Scout. She came, she came to his door and said, it's time, you know, I mean, I'm here selling cookies and he, and he said, I already bought some. And then he closed the door and he said, I have sunk to an all time low. I just lied to a girl scout. And, um, and he said, that's when things really turned around for him that he had sunk that far down that he lied to a girl scout and said that he already bought some. I thought that was just a really powerful story. So did he do anything to make it right with her? He didn't know. He never talked about that, but he changed. He said that turned his life around. He's like, man, you are really a creep. You know, how, how low can you get to lie to a little cute little girl scout selling cookies? Wow. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> do, you, do you buy from everybody that knocks on your door? Uh, well, I'm living in a new place here that's um, there, it's gated and nobody has come and knock on my door. <laughs> the, the post office won't even deliver my mail. I went over there today and they're like, and I already told him I lived here. And so, I mean, boy, you got to love the U.S. post office. But anyway, I have to go pick up my mail because the driver doesn't know yet. And I've told what? him now. Yeah. The route guy. Yep. Wow. That's, <laughs> so, that's not cool. It's very not cool. He's like, I've been driving around for days. I can't find this place. It's yeah. not even on GPS, right? Like, you yeah. Can't well, I'll tell you what. The only people, there's two companies that can find me. Guess who they are? Who? Amazon and FedEx. Wow. So that really? tells you something about, yeah, Amazon, no problem. And like I said, I got a, I ordered something on Amazon that was delivered U.S. Postal and they sent me a email and said, hey, we can't find you. And so I had to go down and pick it up. But, but anything Amazon, their own delivery or FedEx, they find you. Wow. So. That's pretty incredible, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, blessed or stressed you get to choose are you blessed or are you stressed and if you're stressed trust me i get it i know doug you get it man i mean you and i talk almost every day and 
you know, somebody as blessed as you, I still, I still hear it every now and then in your voice. And I'll say, what's, what's wrong, dude. And, Oh, you know, the dishwasher, a brand new house and the dishwasher doesn't oh, work. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to get stressed, try moving into a new home that, you know, is a beautiful <laughs> home. You spend all this money on it and then half the stuff doesn't work. Yeah. So you got to call the people back and they, I just, you know, I, I just need to learn to relax a little more because it, it, it doesn't matter. It's not going to matter. My dad had a little saying that said, before you get mad, stop and think about this and ask yourself this question. 30 years from now, even 20 years from now, is this going to matter? And the answer he said is always no, it's not going to matter. You know what is even is even deeper? Because I've always said, if you think 200 years ago, did this problem matter? And 200 years from now, is it going to even, I mean, nobody, it's not going to even be in existence. Yeah. Well, Ken, I always like what you, you know, what you say is that, no matter how wealthy you are, no matter how much success you've had, nobody, okay, two things, you always say this, everybody's going to leave this earth, they're going to die, and they're not going to take anything with them. Yeah. Ain't never seen a hearse with a luggage rack. <laughs> full, of, full of money, yep. <laughs> I mean, there are people that, that get buried with their money, I've heard, which yeah, just is like mind-boggling to me. What kind of an idiot does that? Like that is just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Charles just said he recommends inspections and I did all that. There's, just, there's little things that you find, Charles, and you know this. Um, there's always little things and thank goodness there's a year warranty on the house. So, um, yeah, I mean, and my, my builder has been great. You know, they, anything I've asked for, they've, they've done it. And, but the problem is, as you know, builders are, they come whenever they want to come and, it's a little frustrating, but you just, you know what? It's no big deal. You just have to look. I look at the bright side. I have a new house. It's great. And um, I'm so blessed. And there's no snow. There's no snow. Exactly. And you could play golf if you wanted tomorrow or ride your Harley or whatever you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Or get on a plane and fly to Ohio if you'd like to see some snow. Yeah. And visit you or go yeah. walk, walk about 20 steps out here and go to the swimming. So. <laughs> Because I'm the only one that lives there, and there's a swimming pool, and it's you're yeah. the only resident. In yeah, the because they, they're still they still have to build the 25 other houses. I mean, they're in process, so wow, um, they're they're selling the lots pretty quickly. But uh, but anyway, we are all blessed. I mean, if if everyone on this show can just stop and think about the blessings that we have and and think positively, yeah. uh, you know, we we just went through an election, and a lot of people were like, okay, the world's going to end, but you know, four years from now, we'll, we'll all still be here and, and America's going to continue on. And, yep. and, um, you know, um, we're just so blessed. So we are, and that's what, you know, I try to encourage people to focus on, you know, I, I mean, I work, I look, I, I didn't, I didn't grow up with, with, uh, you know, um, I didn't grow up the way you did. It was completely different. And, you know, I became an alcoholic and, and God, by the grace of God and a lot of hard work that I did, I recovered from that. And, you know, I, um, <clears throat> but you know, the, the, an alcoholic or an addict or whatever doesn't become that because they feel so great about themselves. Right. We, we, we do that stuff to ourselves because of how bad we feel about ourselves. Hey, there's Greg Crane. Greg, we are helping Greg write his second book right now. Jill and Greg have been working on that, and, and uh, it's just about finished. So welcome, brother. Good to see you. He's a, he's a Canadian feller up in Canada, and, and <laughs> up in Canada. And he, uh, great dude, man. He's a great guy. He's actually been down here in Ohio to my house. No, no kidding. I, yeah, I've never met him yet before, but. Greg's a super guy. Hockey coach for junior hockey up in Canada for mm. many, many, many years. I don't even remember how many years, It's, but it's a lot. So yeah. good dude, man. Good dude. I can't wait for you guys to meet someday. But, the, you know. You, you you get into these cycles of 
of people get into cycles of something goes wrong, one little bad, tiny little event, maybe a drop of glass in the sink and it shatters. And, and that man just triggers something in you and you go, you know what? Ugh, this always happens to me. And then when you say always happens to you, the next glass you pick up, <laughs> you know, or, yeah. you know, or in the back of your mind, you're like, oh man, this is a horrible way to start the day. And now the day is ruined. And all you're doing is putting out to the universe that, hey, let's set up the day for for it to be ruined for Doug or whoever dropped the glass in the sink. There's Glenn Morshower, dude. I was going to invite Glenn to join us, but I every time I look at Clubhouse, he's on Clubhouse. <laughs> I'm like, well, I didn't get the memo. Apparently, my Friday night show was canceled by the network. <laughs> yeah, he's but, he's one of the rock stars of Clubhouse. I know he is, man. He's he's always on there. Dude, if you want to come on, I'll send you the link right now, man. We're talking yeah. about blessed or stressed and showing off Doug's jacket that his dad left behind check it out let me know man if you want to come on glenn i'd love to have you pop on bro there's his, yeah. there's doug's jacket so you know but letting letting little tiny th events that occur that start to spiral for people it starts spiraling out of control in their mind it, it's not actually happening it's okay. happening here and then it happens out here Glenn's going to pop on, dude. Let's get him in here. Okay, cool. Let's yeah, get you know, Zig, Zig Ziglar talked about that stinking thinking. Yeah. And, um, man, that's so true, right? Yep. It, it really is. 1,000% true. It's Life is really how you, how you think and how you react to things, yeah, as we talked about. So Glenn's going to pop on. Good. Glenn's going to pop on. Hang on real quick. I got to fix something real fast here. So yeah, the, the, the stinking thinking old man, the, you know, I've had, um, I've had many, many, many occasions in my life where, you know, I, I allowed stinking thinking to, oh. I mean, literally destroy and people don't realize it, that, that, so many things are going that go wrong in life. They go wrong because we get into these, 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 these cycles of feeling bad or feeling sorry for ourselves or, or make our, have you ever, have you ever thought like, for example, I, I don't know if you've ever had this or not, dude, but um, where like you feel scared about something like, mm -hmm really overly concerned about something and then you r later realize that that um man my brain made all that up it wasn't even true yeah have you had that where you had that realization sure yeah i mean i told you before that my mom was you know and i think rightly so where my mom came from germany and she lived through world war ii and things she was always nervous and and worried about things and um you know some sometimes i have some of that where i worry too much. And, and you got to be really careful because it worry is not good for you physically as well. I mean, I think it takes years off your life, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, so much in your mind and Glenn can, when Glenn comes on, he can talk about that, you know, that uh, man, your mind really needs to stay positive and avoid, you know, things like worrying and stress and, and those types of things, because it can really harm you physically and mentally. Dude, it, it really can. It can, it can. And, and Ken, you grew up, I mean, I mean, I read your book and your life story is amazing. Um, how you grew up and the things that you went through and you're a wonderful person. And uh, I, you, I, I just can't imagine. I mean, I lived a pretty much of a Brady Bunch life and, and, you know, living in Utah, I had a great family, but uh, my parents were loving and kind, but man, you went through, I mean, you went through hell growing up and, and you, you know, you, you were a great guy and, um, thanks you, dude. I mean, your book was phenomenal. I just can't believe it when I read it, all the things you went through and you turned out wonderful and, and, you know, dude, I'm, I'm look, man, I'm no different than you or anyone. I mean, I'm just, I'm just me. And, and I always go, 
you know, I, I, I appreciate everything you're saying, but I, I, I'm still human. I make mistakes. I'm very imperfect. And I, I'm, you know, I, I've just, I've just learned along the way. Pain is the predecessor of all wisdom. And I think that if it, if it were not the, for the, the, the crap that we go through as human beings, we don't come out, we don't get to come out on the other side as, as these wiser beings that can help other people. Like Uh it gives me, you know, if, if, if a, a raging alcoholic called you up and said, Doug, because that's how raging alcoholics talk. Um, but he, oh man, I'm drunk again. I can't, I just don't know how to stay sober. Are you qualified to teach them how to stay sober? Me? Yeah. Well, I don't really have a drinking problem. Right. That's what uh, I mean. I, right? you know, I mean, I, I could try to help them for sure. If I said to you, Hey Doug, Man, do you know anybody that could help me with this design concept I have for a new ladder? Would you Would you know who to talk to? Sure. Could you help me probably even go, well, dude, no, you want to, right? Because you're experienced in that business. Sure, I'm sure. experienced in the being a full-blown raging alcoholic business, right? Yeah. So yeah. I can help somebody that needs help. I know what to say. I know where to point them. I know what to... I know how to, I know all their, I know all their BS excuses. Look at this. We got Glenn Moore shower in the house. Can he hear us? He's probably ben? thinking, what is he wearing? <laughs> I think I'm listening to two tracks right now. Hold on just a minute. Oh, you've got, you probably have it open in the background on Facebook. <laughs> Hold on. So he's got what does he have? Like um the echo coming through. Rookie, is this like my first rodeo? Gee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, there you go. What so, you know, I'm not used to coming on the show starting out as a fanboy. <laughs> I was here fanboying on you guys. Good evening, Glenn. You're up there, Mr. Wing. How are you, sir? I'm extremely well. These fries brought to you by the fine people. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, guess who I talked to today for a good bit, too. Wait a minute. The ghost of former Green Bay Packer coach Vince Lombardi. No. How did you guess that? Oh, a random guess. <laughs> who did you speak with? I talked to Brad Leland, man. For oh, you a- did. I was in Brad's hometown this morning. Oh, were you really? Yeah, he lives out in Allen, Texas, and I was there trying to take my mama for a vaccine. Oh, uh, he's such a good dude, man. How'd you happen to talk to Brad? Just he called me. He's he's on my show next week. Oh, nice. So he called. He just has his movie to... come out yet, or are you timing it with the opening? His movie actually, comes... I think they open on the ele- on the twelfth, yeah, the don't they? Yeah. 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 So yeah. he's on two days before the movie comes out. Awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. What Excited. have I missed? What have I missed? What are you guys talking about? We're talking about I I literally Doug and I were talking and. And, and I, I just, you know, I, I, during our conversation, we were taught, well, we've talked a lot about his dad and talked about being blessed, being stressed. And I just thought, man, what a great title for a show. I said, dude, if I go live, you want to hop on? I hopped over to clubhouse and I saw you were in a room and I'm like, I'm not bothering Glenn. And so I came, I just said, and I went, I went live and said, the title is, are you blessed or stressed? It is a choice. I think it's, or you get to choose. You get to choose. And that's yeah, it is. It is true that we get to choose. I don't know that everyone's ready to hear that news. I to know. Me, I can't imagine not being ready to hear it because it, it's that? very freeing. Yeah, I saw Charles. <laughs> Charles line. Um, it's it's very it's very freeing to realize that in so many ways. You are, you are really severely influencing the trajectory of your life. I mean, we don't have total say so. That's for sure. There are a lot of things that occur, but we do have say so over our response to events. And yeah. I heard Doug saying the same thing. I mean, you know, and and if you pay attention to life, I, I personally I think it's an inevitability that at some point you will come to that conclusion. 
right? But hopefully you come to it before you die. Hopefully while you're in this form, in this body, it, it occurs to you that, that you have say so, and you can decide which groove you want to live your life in. Are you going to live it as a complainer or as a celebrator? And, and here's the problem. Once you have created a habit of living in a particular lane, the things that show up, and this is what I think is key, the things that show up are the things that are akin to that lane. Yeah. So if you live in the lane of negativity, for example, the pop-up windows that show up in your life, they're not positive. Those are not positive because they're linked to the groove you're in. Yeah. So you have to decide what lane do I want to be in? And then in doing so, you wind up creating a whole different frequency of pop-up windows, the ideas that occur to you. You know, someone in one of the rooms today talked about um, be happy then, be happy, comma, then. And I thought it was brilliant that yeah. you make a decision to be happy, comma, and then watch this, and then hear these other things come. Yep. But those things don't show up unless you've made a decision to drive in a different lane. You know, and I think yeah. one of the reasons that's hard for people to accept is because then it, I guess, owning your situation can be painful because then you're, you, here's the problem. If you're someone who gets great release out of blaming, then that's not going to be easy because now you can't blame people anymore. But see, I think that, don't you think that there are people who, who, who do that? And I, and do, I well, do what, this, this is a, this is a rhetorical question, by the way, cause I already know the answer I've done that where, <clears throat> I mean, dude, let's see when I, I, I was, um, eight or nine, probably when I took my first drink, like knowingly, I mean, my mm -hmm. grandmother used to rub whiskey on my gums as a baby when I was cutting my teeth. I, mm -hmm. I heard some kids get milk. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ken got Jack Daniels or something. So. Yeah, but but you know, I just want to point out that we might have had a a grandparenting issue there. My, <laughs> no, my mom. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> no, my, my my mom might be why. But anyway, so um, I I don't know if that's true or not. But nonetheless, I I know by the time I was eight or nine, I I was you know starting to starting to take sips where I could. And by the time I was 12 or 13, I was pretty much a full-blown alcoholic. So I spent, I literally was conditioned. I was programmed um, and saw like, okay, this is how you live your life. You drink a lot and you blame other people for your shit, your problems. Mm. And, and so I, I, I listen, I perfected it. Okay. I really did a good job at drinking a lot and blaming other people for my crap. And, and, and so eventually what happened was everybody left and I was, I mean, everybody in my entire life left and I was left sitting at the bar alone and going back to a hotel at night in my town that I lived in. <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'm still, a, I'm, I'm still a CEO. C a, I'm still a CEO of my company. So I'm okay. And, and I drive a Mercedes until I get pulled over in it. But like, you know, I, I was, I was out of, my freaking mind with blaming everything and everybody mm -hmm. around me and not taking responsibility. And once I learned to release all of that anger and that frustration and that pain, and I turned it over to God and I got on my knees and I asked God to forgive me, forgive others that harmed me and, and, and prayed for those people to be blessed with the same blessings I wanted in my life. And that's so hard to do, man. But when I did all of those things, something miraculous started happening. And that was, I stopped blaming people. Mm -hmm. I still, I still have my flare ups. Ask, ask my wife. <laughs> I still, or I ask me your other wife. <laughs> <laughs> I would know. Well, you know, it is all your fault, but anyway, so moving so on. Hello. <laughs> check, please. Check. 
case. But like, you know, I, I got really, I, I, you know, you start taking responsibility for your life. You don't feel resentful because your buddy's sitting there eating fries from one of his favorite places on right. planet Earth. You don't, you don't, you don't have fry envy. No, never. <laughs> But you know what, Ken, I think for you, it all harkens back to, you know, most babies are brought into the world. And as they learn the English language, it's mommy, <laughs> daddy, right? Rent. Stay with me. Mommy, daddy, Randy, <laughs> but not Ken's life. It's mommy, daddy, Stoley. <laughs> oh my god no i hope my mom mom he's playing grandma wasn't that bad so so look at laura hey 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 she gets a triple hey i am blessed beyond measure well you know what it's just tough to have a bad day if that's your mantra I have a friend, you, I think, have you met Dr. Doug McCloy? I don't know if you've met Dr. McCloy or not, but he is a really good guy. He's the guy that has the, the, the mission, um, optometry practice down in Jamaica and oh. such, such a good, good man. And, and, you know, I talk to him and talk about where he lives on this beautiful lake and all this. And, and he's like, dude, you know, he goes, I'm, uh, I'm, bl uh, it's this simple. I say this all the time. I am blessed and favored. And I'm, I love that because it, in Glenn, you talk about this all the time. Doug just brought up something you said a little bit ago before What's you that? came on. What was that, Doug? Do you remember? You said Glenn even says all the time. What was that? I forget uh, what it was. I can't remember. <laughs> We're losing it, Ken. Uh, yeah, well, old age, but, um, you know, but it's, it's, we attract the things that we speak out loud into our lives. And Doug, Doug, Dr. Doug says that all the time. He says, I am, I am blessed and favored. And when mm -hmm. we live from that place all the time, or even, I don't know, 90% of the time, then we are. Absolutely. Uh, there's a condition called twice blessed that uh, I speak a lot about in my uh, motivational talks. And twice blessed means that you're blessed, but the bigger blessing is that you know you're blessed. And that's the twice blessed is being conscious of your being blessed. Because listen, if you're blessed, but don't know it, there's no way to fully reside in it. There's no way to fully appreciate it. You, you have to go, wow, I'm, I'm blessed. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I see what's going on here. And, and then you're twice blessed. Yeah. So I think, I think among the things that are non-negotiable in, in my view, if I can say, if you want to have a great experience in the, in the world, it begins by being conscious. You got to wake up. You just have to be conscious. You've got to become a chronic noticer. Yeah. And as a chronic noticer, things won't get by you because you'll be too busy noticing. You're looking, going, "That's cool. That is. Look at that cloud. Look at that. Look at those two bugs. Look at them making love to each other. That's awesome. <laughs> you know. Uh. <laughs> I'm telling you, those are those are. The are you things. saying you watch bug porn? <laughs> I have been known to enjoy watching bugs copulate. That's a true story. Oh, you know, you just look and you go, you guys are not having a bad day at all. Look at you, you know? And then what's weird is you leave and you go in for your meeting at Warner brothers and the same two insects that were going at it 30 minutes ago are still going at it. <laughs> and then the prevailing thought is, I remember when I could do that, <laughs> you know, and then you go on about having a great day. Oh my god. I'm sorry, oh. too soon. Oh, that's funny, dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy moly. No, I mean, I just think that there are fundamental keys to happiness. I, I really do. And I think you it begins and ends with are you in love with your life? And do you love life itself? Do you even view life as a gift? 
I mean, let's yeah. go down to the the basement level, the foundational belief is, um, and uh, you know, there's a question that I do ask people all the time, and it is never asked to be obnoxious, ever. Right. It's it's just a it's a real press someone thing to ask it because it presses them. It puts it puts them to the task of having to take a look at something that they might not want to take a look at. And that's whenever someone says something that is evidence of the already made up mind, right? They'll say th something like, you know, it's just that way in life or, or whatever it is. And they're usually frowning when they say it, you know, it's some pronouncement about life. And, and I say, so do you want that to be true? Hmm. And it stops them in their tracks. You go, so do, do you want that to be true? Because because you're sure talking a lot about it like you want it to be true. Is that is that something you want to be true? Wow. And they go into reflection and you go, yeah, because that does not have to be true for you. That, that you are you are in in a position of choice. So have you given any thought if that's even something you want to be true? And the answer is if you're if you mean it when you say, well, no, I don't, I, I, I don't want it to be true. Like a guy said today in, in one of the rooms that I was leading, well, the, the one that the big one, that was my own room. It's the first time I've ever opened my own room, right? I've done them with other people, but I, I opened the room myself and started, and it came from not wanting to be suppressed when I had something really valuable to say. Hmm. And if you feel like you've got something really valuable to say, you might might want to just go ahead and step up to the plate and say it, right? Yeah. So one of the people that was speaking in the room just said, you know, I've got these kids and, and um, you know, it's just, it's just that time. It's just that time. And so it's that time in life where it's hard and, and they are nine and like, and the other one, it was really disproportionate, like, like nine and 16 or whatever. And I said, um, do you want it to be that way? And he goes, what? And I said, do, do you hear the evidence? I'm not being critical. I'm asking you if you hear yourself, do you hear the evidence of what I refer to as the already made up mind? Because mm. you've already made up your mind about that. So do you understand, understand that that becomes inescapable as long as you constantly bombard discussions by saying, well, you know, it's just it's just that time in life, you know, where um, you just you don't really get along with your children. Really? Really? I wow. want to say it again, really? Because <laughs> I never went across that bridge where I pre-decided, well, we're in that time where you just don't get along with your children. And I'm convinced that's why I got along with my children. Because I didn't decide, well, let's just write the next five years off because, you know, this is the time when parents and children can't possibly get along. My point is this. There are too many times that people are making the decisions they make in their life based on their internal imprinting, which wasn't even theirs. It was downloaded by society and they bought into it. Yeah. Innocently, usually way back when, when they were kids and they've been living as though it were so. And then all of a sudden this, you know, you've heard me Ken talk about like even the song, for example, I don't want to go off on any one thing, but for example, there was a song many years ago and there are a lot of pieces of music that are like this. It was Karen Carpenter's hit rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Let me say that again. Rainy days and Mondays, not just rainy <laughs> days and Mondays. Next keyword, always, not some of the time, always get me down. Can I just mention to you that <laughs> rainy days and Mondays have never gotten me down ever. Not one time. Why? Right. Because I don't buy into that societal download that says, oh, it's gloomy out there. Really? What, what, I'm sorry, what does it mean? It's, it's gloomy. What do you mean? Well, you know, it's raining. Oh, you mean like the world needs? Is that what you meant to say? <laughs> you mean like because it's raining and the earth needs rain and that's what we're supposed to be depressed about? Thank you very much for that <laughs> ridiculous download. You know, I mean, come on. Rainy uh, days and Mondays. I've okay. never once in my life, that's a big statement, Ken. Not one time in my life have I gotten down because it's Monday. And no. here's the deal. If you're someone that's down because it's Monday, go change your friggin' life. Get Amen. a different relationship with Mondays. Because here's the deal. 
If that's true, you have mathematically decided to have your life suck one seventh of the time. Yep. Every Monday, you've decided <laughs> it always gets me down. Now, tack on to that all the other days of the week when it rains. And please, God, don't move to <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. I, he's Charles says yesterday was the anniversary. I wonder if she died on a rainy Monday. Well, I'm not making fun of Karen Carpenter, but I wish there had been a metaphysician. I wish there had been a metaphysician in there going, hey, Karen, we got to do better than this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's beautiful music. I really love your voice. I do. I love the tone, but the lyrics, honey, come on. We can't send this out to people. The, the kids are going, rainy days and Mondays always get me down. And then we wonder why Monday morning they're shooting up. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, too soon? Oh, my God, that's funny, dude. No, I mean, wow. you know, why do we tell ourselves things that are not so? Why do we do that? I, you know, I, I, I don't know. You know, you you missed last night we were in a room with, with Doug. I'm not even high right now. I'd just like to mention that. <laughs> I know you're not. I don't even do drugs. Uh, Justin did a room last night for, what was it, the dating game? Yeah, and we had Mark Rodriguez and myself and Kellen as the bachelors and the bachelorette. Oh, no, wait a minute. You did this on Clubhouse. Last, on Clubhouse. For you two did hours. not. That's yes. beautiful. Yeah, it, it was, was really fun. fun. And Mark, so wait, so who was the host? Justin. Justin, yeah, Justin was the host? Yeah. Yeah. And well, it was, tell and us he, about that. I'll shut up. I want to hear. No, it was, it was about uh, Doug is Doug and, and Mark Rodriguez are looking for a mate in life. Uh, the, the right mate, not a mate, the yeah. right woman is, 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 and so it was a great so discussion. after the evening. Was that still true or did you find the right <laughs> woman and you're good to go now? I didn't have any messages from anyone. <laughs> oh, you didn't have any applicants? <laughs> yeah, but um, no, but didn't you think Jennifer was really good, Ken? Uh, she, dude, she was Jen, Jen, oh, Jen, Jen was in it. Oh, dude, she, oh, hey. Jen's an angel. Dude, she, she was she, right on. She was she great. Laid it. She said, you know, well, I don't want to go into all of it, but she, she just, she laid it out. She talked about faith in God, and and I mean, just really. She she was amazing. She was amazing. I had a meeting with her today. I'm like, you've got to like become a ser. Um, she could be a relationship coach. I'll bet she could be any any kind. She's amazing. But I want to hear your take, Glenn. Although it was rather for you, it was rather. Um, I wish I'd have known that, Doug. I would love to have listened to you guys. We're going to do it again I, weekly, I think, just Okay, well, the earliest I could do it would be till night, tonight. I can't do it until tonight. <laughs> what were we going to ask, though, Ken? Well, so so I just would like, you know, it was easy. Not easy. I shouldn't say easy. But for you, it was serendipitous, maybe, Yeah, um, would be the word. It was just one of those things that happened. And, and look who's here. Jeff Christensen is here. AKA Jay Fox. What's Jay up? Fox. Jay Fox. Good morning, Jay Fox. <laughs> all the hits, all the time. That's my buddy. He's awesome, man. He was just in the uh, other room with us. Oh, was he? Yeah, and my oh. phone died. So they probably thought I was being rude. You know, things are not always what they appear to be. It's like, God, Glenn just dumped us. No, I stayed on the phone so long that my phone died. <laughs> and then I went to feed my face hole. Dude, so so, what would you, if you had a good-looking guy like Doug Wing, who's been incredibly successful financially, spiritually, he's just a great dude. How how would you tell a man like of Doug's stature, of anybody really? But how do you find that 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 one? You that, give up the search. Your, your criteria, huh? You give up, you give up the search and just be, there's no need to search. Just be, they'll seek you out. They'll find you. That's how strong energy is. Mm, and, and, and you just have to fervently believe in that. You just have to fervently know that 
Uh, here's the deal. I really hold the belief that it would be impossible for me to miss my appointments in life because I care that much about keeping them. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about heavenly appointments that, that my creator understands that I'm seriously interested in keeping all appointments. Therefore, I, I, I don't need to go on an active search for them. All I have to do is keep being fully present everywhere I am, suiting up and showing up, coming from love. And, oh, here, look at this. Look at what Colleen said. And Cindy. Yeah, yeah. Literally, they said it back to back. Wow. Sometimes, yeah, so I didn't see that, but hard. it's how I feel. Is that what you're saying? Sometimes we push too hard. We try too hard. We're trying too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think the effort comes at just in taking a stand for our truth. And, um, you know, it's interesting. A lot of relationships I find don't work because in friendships too, friendships that are built upon the same uh, nonsense is that you have two people that are meeting under false pretenses. So they're meeting, not that you would do this, Doug. I'm just saying this is prevalent in our world. You seem like a really, really genuinely nice person and, uh, someone who doesn't operate in facades. I mean, that's at least how you strike me. I've always liked you. And um, and so deep down inside, especially if someone doesn't feel like they're enough, then they will they will decorate, they will decorate the item, them being the item, and to so that it becomes polished and waxed and beautiful and presentable. And then all of a sudden, that's what somebody's drawn to, only to find out that that was a lie that that person can't, they can't keep up the lie. And when they can't keep it up anymore and the truth about who it is they really are inside leaks out, then they hit that proverbial wall. And it would be so much easier if we would all admit up front, here's who I am. Two things. I want to be real clear. I don't think a lot of focus needs to be on who, who I've been. I really don't. And when I say me, I don't mean me, myself. I mean, yes, me, myself, but all of us. I think two things matter. Who it is you are and who it is you're en route to becoming. I think those are the ones that matter because the other ones are in the history books. So tell me, show me who you are. This is how I feel about friends. It's how I feel about, show me who you are and, and tell me who it is you're working on becoming. Who, who do you, and, and what, where can I help you? How can I help you in supporting your image for your own future? And it might be that who it is you're interested in becoming is a continuation of who you currently are. No major change. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't have big lofty dreams. And when people say, you should have, you know what? Save it. Take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. I don't really need to hear it because I'm happy with life. And if I get more of what's going on already, meaning more time, not more money, not more items, not more this, not more that, just more time to enjoy what I'm currently enjoying. That is the ultimate gift. The ultimate gift is more time to enjoy what we have. And I believe that everything that is important to show up in my life will show up by divine appointment as long as I keep upholding my end of the agreement, which is to continue living well. And here's the thing, you know, Ken has a saying, sometimes the trash takes itself out, which I really, I agree. And that's not a reference to people. Be real clear. That's a reference to a way of being. There are certainly trashy ways of being. There are trashy habits. There are trashy thoughts. There are trashy bandwidths, if you will. And if we don't, if we don't um, align with those, they'll go away. They can't stay. Those things cannot stay in our lives. Right. Right. So that that does, I mean, that does include the wrong people being in your life. They'll go away. They'll go away. And the reason they'll go away is because your alignment will be something they're not ready for. 
Right. And in some instances, it will actually anger them. So the whole idea is not to, to diminish our light. Right. The idea is you shine the way you know how to shine. People are going to do one of two things. They're going to stay or they're going to leave. Yep. Mm -hmm. And both are okay. Hence, and both are okay. Hence the term, you do you, boo. Words right out of my mouth, Ken. You know, it, it's, it's what I was going to say next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great advice, Glenn. I really appreciate it. It's it's so true, man. If you you just, you know, it's like I've said, you know, you just live the best version of you that you can be and 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 love your life and and do what you already do, Doug. You know, you you're Doug is one of the the kindest, most generous people I have ever known. He just is a generous, generous man. And, 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 you know, you just keep doing that. The right, the right one is just going to show up. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, you do. <coughs> I'll just, just quote you. Point five. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's, it's all about vibrations, man. It's the energy we put out. Uh -huh. Do you realize that Monday of this week was two one two one? Just saying. Was it? Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yep. No, I did not realize that. No. What does this say? Complete honesty. What you see is what you get. Share your happiness. If you aren't a happy person, the one you were talking to will see it. It's true. See? Yes, please. Yeah. Yes, please. Colleen, I love Doug, what Colleen's saying. She will show up, I promise you, when you least expect. Wow, this is, appreciate the comments, wonderful. And I'm going to be there and live stream the damn wedding. Well, <laughs> I don't know, I yeah. don't know if it would be when you least expect it. <clears throat> because like if I were least expecting, like if you were, no, I can't even go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey we love our dougie we, we do we love, love doug you yeah. know one of the things i love about doug and by the way uh we'll be back after these words from our sponsor with another episode of what you love about doug <laughs> um <laughs> and what i do love about doug is he reminds me of my wife in the gentleness department he's just he's a gentle you know truly a gentle man we say a gentleman. Yeah. He's a gentleman. He is. And gentle people are cool. <clears throat> I'm yeah. married to a gentle person. Yeah. You know. Well, you're you're pretty <laughs> gentle yourself. I am pretty mellow. I gotta say. Yeah. Glenn won't even kill a spider, dude. Won't do it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, that was a good story when you talked about that. That's won't do it. Am I an ordained minister? Uh, I'm not ordained. Doug, are you ordained? Uh, well, in my faith, I have the priesthood, and those, and um, you, you are ordained to certain positions in the in the priesthood. So, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, getting the love you want by Harvey Hendricks, grade book, grade book. I don't know what that, that means. I think they're recommending a book, right? Is that what they're... Getting the Love You Want, yeah, by Harville, Harville Henry. Okay. You know, um, yeah, man. I, so this, this show is about... 90 I, minutes. The title of this is, Are You Blessed or Stressed? You Get to Choose. And, and no matter what, and, and I referenced before you, you got here earlier, Glenn, I referenced the book um, that I love to reference, and I love this book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And, I mean, the dude watched his entire family and all of his friends be slaughtered in Auschwitz in the German death camps. And... Um, 
and he found peace while he was there and he found happiness and he found joy he wasn't joyful that his family had been killed um but he found he he he, he realized that he said you know i realized that the the german soldiers they could they could take everything in my life from me but the one thing that they could never take unless i allowed it was my mind and and man that's it's such a powerful book and it's so it's so true like i i i've thought about that you know i i've I look at the number of people who die every year from alcoholism and drug addictions and, and all kinds of other addictions. And, and I, I look at, at, at my life and think, you know, there's times when I think why, why, you know, survivor's guilt, you know, like why me, why was I, why was I chosen to, to, to be blessed with the same exact opportunity that millions and millions of other people were blessed with and at least for today i've got it still and they they didn't and glenn i don't mean i'm not I, I, hopefully i'm not hitting too close to home but you know i mean i don't like do, I, do I, I appear to be even slightly emotional about well what you, you are a professional actor and a damn good one so i, I don't use it in my personal life that's true that's true i mean i don't but, yeah. I know you don't. I, I, you know, I just think whatever you want to say about this, brother, you're not hitting too close to home. It's okay. I just think that, you know, I'm, you know, I think that it, the survivor's guilt sometimes is like, why am I given this opportunity? And, 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 and me personally, instead of questioning that I go, you know what? The reason that I was given this opportunity is I have a big mouth. And I'm going to talk to everybody with ears about it. And hopefully I can impact other people along the way that need to be given an opportunity to change their freaking lives. Get out of the bullshit excuses, pardon my language, but get out of the excuses and get into recovery, get into looking in the mirror, get into to changing your life and the trajectory of where you're headed. Right. But do you get, and I know the answer is yes, but I want to remind you of something that the more you do that, which is a lot, the more you do that, listen caref carefully, my dear brother, the more you do that, the more you hear you doing that, which means you cannot, you cannot keep from responding to your own coaching. Right. Which is great. That's so true. So as you're talking about this, you're reinforcing your own opinions about it. You're coaching yeah. others and yourself simultaneously. Yep. Because yeah, otherwise you, you will have a colossal breakdown if you don't walk your talk. You can't be telling everybody that unless you're going to abide by it. That's and true. the more you abide by it and the more you commit to abiding by that, which you're, you're, you're stating is the truth, the deeper these feelings run and it reinforces it. And it's how you keep yourself healthy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hey, Ken, can I ask Glenn a question? Dude, may you I, don't even have to ask me. Ask, ask Glenn me. a question. Just Glenn, uh, you, you, know, you are an actor, and there are probably times when I'm sure when you're in movies and you know, doing your scenes and things, and it can be quite stressful, what are some of the things that, you know, to make sure you get your, make the scenes and, all, and do all that, what are some of the things that you've learned to do when you're under stress like that, because I'm sure that there's pressure on in some of these scenes and things like that. Um, it, pressure rarely appears. And if it's, and if it appears, it's because something wasn't handled well. Right. And, and when I say that this is not blame, it's about assigning a reason like, so I just make sure that the reasons are not self-induced. Right. So that's my only protection against it. Just make sure that I'm up holding my end of the agreement. I'm keeping my side of the street clean. But for example, if you show up on set and you've not been given a script and you don't know why, now this happens very infrequently 
and and I and I'm not at liberty to say when it has happened because that would jeopardize my position. But there have been projects that I've been on. It is not the current one I'm doing, and that's that is hand to God. That's the truth. I am as happy as the day is long on the resident. I love that show, and I love the way it's run. Um, but I have had experiences where a huge amount of dialogue was thrown to me that morning and nobody had bothered to send a script and we're shooting in 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Ooh, holy cow. And that's stressful. <clears throat> and the release on it is whatever happens, I didn't put myself in this position. So the only real hard time that I have in life is when I realize that someone else's choices are creating a situation with me that allows me or that doesn't invite me. I won't say prevents, but it doesn't invite me to be at my best. It doesn't invite that because it doesn't provide it. It doesn't facilitate. And you say, well, you're, you're at your best and you're going to shine anyway. Yeah, I, I'm going to shine. I'm going to do what I know how to do, but it is not the correct nor the preferred environment because nobody, nobody's going to be handed two full pages of dialogue and, and you look at it and go, okay, I'm good. I'm ready. Word for word. No, no, you're not. So, the proper amount of time must be given. And if it's not given, then we have a problem. And here's the problem. The problem is you're the one that's left out. You're the one that's left hanging out to dry. I mean, because nobody else is owning their role in it. So if you're there and you're stuck and the words aren't flowing, you're the one that looks like the idiot. And that's difficult to take. When you realize the only reason these words, I'm not blaming, but I definitely want some ownership here. The only reason this struggle is occurring is because someone didn't do their job and that someone is not me. This is one of the reasons as much as I can in my life, I intentionally try not to depend on a lot of people. I try to be as self-reliant as I can and to mitigate by not depending on large bunches of people because I have too high a standard in my life to depend on other people. We all have to depend on other people. There's no doubt about it. We do, but we got to be real careful about who we're depending on. That's mm -hmm. key. And the higher your bar is, the truer that is. If you have no bar, how about this? If you have no bar, I have news for you. Please depend on everybody. Mm -hmm. Just depend on everybody that they're going to deliver. Of course they will. Every There will never be a disappointment because everyone's an extra miler. Yeah, well, if you believe in that, then you believe in the tooth fairy because it's not the way it is. So I am used to working at a very high level, and I have very high standards. They are not unrealistic. They're professional. So you only want to work with a team that shares that same vision of professionalism. You don't want slackers. I mean, who who with that wants a company to succeed says, okay, so listen, we're going to dive into this thing. We're getting underway first thing tomorrow morning. We still need four or five employees. And what I'd love to do is fill those slots with slackers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Sure. It just seems like that would be the correct decision. Who has ever done that? So it's okay, it's okay to be selective when choosing who you want to be in the inner circle of your life, right? I, I don't think everyone deserves a spot inner circle. I think that everybody deserves love, everybody deserves respect, but you better bet you I have different rings in my life. And, and that's how it's always been, and I want it to continue that way. Because it can be a real problem if you let someone who didn't earn it into the inner circle of your life and it becomes very problematic when you realize they do not have the standards that you do.
And that's not on them. That's on you. Hmm. That's on you for having let them in to that point. You know, I mean, if you had your home recarpeted with beautiful snowy white carpet and someone comes in with their boots that have mud all over them, I mean, well, that's on you yeah. for not making your policy understood. Yes, you are welcome in my home. You are not welcome in my home with your big, juicy, muddy boots. <laughs> you are welcome. But here's the deal. You take them off. Now yeah. you're welcome. That's called respect. That is an acceptable boundary. Yeah. And, and and if and then here's the thing. If your policy is, hey, man, just whatever, you know, just come on in and let's hang. <laughs> right? If that's your policy, then who are you going to who are you going to look at except yourself when you look and your brand new carpet has been ruined? Uh -huh. And it's because you didn't have any boundaries. You just said, hey, it's a party. Let's let everybody in. Right. So I, I, I have a little bit of a higher standard for people I play ball with. And that's why sometimes the answer to movie offers needs to be no. Yeah. When you find out who's involved, what is the material? What is the standard? And then you would, because if you get involved with a bad project, that can be injurious to your career. And people are going, is his career okay? Is there, why did he, why did he do that piece of garbage? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I may just be rambling here, but hopefully it makes some kind of sense. It made, it makes perfect sense. You're a thousand percent right. I just think I have maybe um, an insistence upon precision that I don't often see. Yep. That doesn't make me special but I do feel different in that regard is that precision is very important to me, but that's because I want specific results in my life. And what I know, nobody has ever written the book, half ass your way to greatness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for smiling, Doug. Cause it's the truth. N nobody has ever half asked their way to greatness in life. Yeah. So that's I true. think we have to be much more intentional about the person that we bring to the plate. Yeah. Every one of us step up to the plate in life every day. And um, I don't know. I, don't I know. agree. You're right. I'm right. I, I, I was, I, I heard what you said, but I was reading um, radical dating on laurianddavis.com. If what you're doing isn't real yielding results, this is a good template inspiration. Right? Oh, okay, cool. Radical, radical dating. Oh, that sounds. Tell us, tell us more about that. What is radical dating? Was that from Jr.? Yeah, from Jr. Wow. So, what is radical dating? Is that meaning like being radically honest about all things up front? Let's just not play games. Let's see. Here's you. Here's me. Do we have a match? Good. Let's go. Yeah. Or here's you. Here's me. That's not a match. But you know what? Best of luck finding your match. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I, I don't know. That sounds what like what it would be. Is that what radical dating is? <laughs> I, I've never heard of it. Oh, I've Glenn, you did in and out tonight. I'm sorry. You you went to In and Out tonight. We did go to In and Out. Oh, we you have In and Out in Arizona. Yes, there are In and Outs in Arizona. Yep. Man. Yeah. Glenn has. Do you guys have Whataburger in Arizona? Yeah, I saw one the other day, but. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I moved to Arizona because there's not very many uh, rainy day Mondays here. So, <laughs> oh, I didn't even know you moved. You live in Arizona now? Yeah, Phoenix. Yeah, I'm I'm living in Phoenix. Yep. When did you leave uh, the Salt Lake area? Uh, about three or four weeks ago. Oh wow, bud! I the house and moved down here, and it was 72 degrees today and sunny and beautiful and. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it didn't stop with Karen's song. You know, there's. Monday, Monday, <laughs> yeah. right? And then you remember this lyric from that one? Every other day, every other day, every other day, every other day of the week is fine. Really? <laughs> every other day is fine, mm -hmm. but not so much Monday. And then just another manic Monday. I wish it were Sunday. I mean, come on. The hell's yeah. wrong with Monday? Monday's pretty cool. I like your Arizona type jacket. Yeah, this you was got kind of an Arizona field fringe. Is that a kind of a fringe thing? Oh yeah, this is like yeah, a, baby. You're all fringed up. Look at you. 
That was my dad's jacket. And Ken said, go get that because I want you to, my dad would come into the office with this thing on. I, I, I was making a point about Glenn. Yeah. I was talking about his dad. Um, his dad was, was um, I'm, from what I have heard, one of the most giving, loving people on the planet that's ever lived. And, and, and he had, you know, like Doug told the story about, he, he heard about a guy that was in the hospital that had lost his leg and had this big accident and his dad shows up and, and, and he's in ICU and, and gets into ICU by saying he's my brother and goes in and, and, and notices that, you know, everybody had worked on this guy's leg and, and not attended to his face was all black and his hands and there was blood and dirt. And, and his dad goes over and gets a warm washcloth and soap and, and wash total stranger, or at least didn't know, I, did he know him, know him? Or I, I, he knew him, you know, he wasn't really good friends. He knew his wife really well from the bank. Yeah. Okay and washes his face and his hands and his arms and, 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 you know, leans over and whispers to him, I am your brother or I am, I am truly your brother or something. And then gives the guy a job for the rest of his life. Cause the guy goes back to work and they, they, there's nothing to go back to. They fired him. And cause he, he I, I mean, I'm sure they didn't fire him cause he was missing half of a leg. They, they couldn't put that down for sure. But, um, you know, just a, 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 a magical guy that just wanted everybody to feel better about life, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> amazing. Just amazing. I think you wake up with a lot of that in you, Ken. I know I do. I do. That I'm every day I'm here to, to do what I can to make life itself better for as many people as I can. And I'm one of those people. Yeah. I think we have to include ourselves in the list of people that we're looking to make things better for. We, we can't forget about us because if we forget about us, we're going to run out of, we're going to run out of pep it's to true. help other people. We got to, what is the old saying is good evening, Daryl. Good evening to you, brother. Um, we have to be inspired in order to be inspiring. Yeah. It's true. You know, it, it, it's, it's almost impossible to inspire someone unless you're inspired. Yeah. Right. So what is it that keeps us inspired? What charges our batteries? And we got to make sure we stay hooked up to that, which charges our batteries. Otherwise we're worthless to other people in the inspiration department. I'm saying we might be helpful in other ways, but it is, it is impossible to inspire if you're not inspired. Yeah. So I've, I've got a lot of inspiring that I do in my life. It's just shown up that way. So I have to make sure that I stay inspired and take care of the machinery. And, and you, you have to put that energy out at all times. And, yeah. you know, you, um, for example, you, you tell, you tell about the, the, the guy, the hello, Hello, if you'll get out your papers and your pens, you ready? Okay. Today, we're going to talk about a condition I like to call extreme joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would leave that guy's classroom like in a heartbeat. <laughs> Yeah, big time. But you know what's weird? When someone sounds like that, buy a tape recorder <laughs> and listen to yourself. Dude, they don't make tape recorders. And then stop on. it. No, didn't you used to play with a tape recorder, Ken, when you were younger and you know, yeah. tape recorder with all your buddies and play it back and laugh and everything? Sure, we all did that, I think. But they no, don't make tape I don't think. If you're a grown man and you go, welcome to my talk show. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell or not, but right now I'm extremely excited to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 
<clears throat> that is funny. Well, hey guys, let's. It's wrap that time. It. I see Ken. He's rocking. I have to. When he starts rocking. Oh, uh, it's uh, this is there, it. Ken. What time is it, Ken? Twelve fourteen. Wow, it's not too bad. But I'm, 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 I'm tapping out. Hey, it's Super Bowl Sunday coming up for the Ken and Glenn Show with a guy named Scott. We're on early this week, four what time p.m. Eastern. Four. Four Eastern. Four Eastern. Okay, we'll be so, on. Four Eastern. What's everyone's prediction before we go for the game? Uh, I think that the Steelers are going to win by <laughs> over the Cowboys, right? <laughs> yeah. I know you. Uh, I think Kansas City is going to win by seven points, but I think it is. I think it is very difficult to bet against Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go with Andy Reid, who is who played at BYU and was mentored by Lavelle Edwards. And I think that Kansas city will win. It will be close. So I'm going to go with Glenn as well. Yeah, me too. And, and not for any spiritual reasons, except for, I just hate Tom Brady. <laughs> you and Jeffrey. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. So I probably shouldn't bring him as the guest in two weeks. No. Hey, by the way, did Scott tell you about the guy <laughs> that he – did he tell you? No, but I can tell you something. What? Tell me. We have a special guest, and that guest is a surprise. When? The guest is going to – you ready? Have this I ever said it. this to you? Have I? No, I would never bring a guest on Super Bowl Sunday. Why not? perfect no it's not perfect because we know the numbers will be you know it i mean people have parties and stuff yeah. they've got their stuff going on so i figure numbers will be down by a little bit but that's not being negative it's just i understand what it is well, we're really only crap. you guys better be there <laughs> well, well, well well our you know our hardcores will be with us but they will. um but the point is he would have done it this coming week <laughs> what <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he does, freaking weirdo Tom. Anyway. But we have a special guest that will be with us the following week. Who so is it? A, a week from Sunday, a guest that is going to blow my buddy Ken Walls away, and it is just for you, my friend. I've already solidified it. I've already approved it, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. Dude, you can't do that. Mark my words, it will be your favorite guest we've ever had. Really? Really. Okay. Including your boyfriend, Brad Leland. I love Brad Leland. I love Brad Leland, too. Why did you say your boyfriend? Because you guys are having a bromance. It's obvious. It was, it was a phone call, dude. <laughs> all right. But that's where it all starts. Yeah, it's got to be a secret. You keep it a secret. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe, no, maybe. What did Jeffrey say? You... <laughs> Something about a guest or what? Anyway, uh, the... what were you saying? He knows who it is. Hey, there's Jonathan Dawson. Hello, Jonathan Dawson. Now you know what he looks like, at least. <laughs> when are you going back to Atlanta, by the way, dude? I think John wrote me. I was in the middle of leading a room all day, and I looked and saw a text. I, I couldn't really respond because I was leading a room on Clubhouse. Oh. But I will not be back in Atlanta for a couple of months. What? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, unless something changes. Look. Yeah, just... see, see, he said I messaged you earlier. Wow. <laughs> so here, let me return John's message right now. Hey, John, <laughs> what do you think about this? A live message. <laughs> hey, John, let me look right into the camera. Hey, buddy, I'm looking forward to meeting you. Uh, I am here in Texas, and I won't be back to Georgia for a little while, probably another five weeks maybe. So when I get back, we'll um, we'll do it. And it'll have to be on the backside of the shoot. It can't be during because their COVID protocols are, oh, you were just watching The Little Things. Cool. Great movie. Cool. Hopefully you're enjoying it, brother. Oh, he just finished it. What'd you think, John? What'd you think? I thought it was a great movie. But I got, you know what? I mean, 20, 2020, I feel like we're still in it. Um, 
but I mean, I do. I don't feel like it. it's kind of just like kind of. Eh. Um, but well, this is the 14th month of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And right. it very much feels like the 14th month of 2020. It sure <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we're just going to shut things down for 14 days to flatten the curve. <laughs> That's all I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to throw that out there and leave it just leave it there. So 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 but I did, you know, look, I met you because of 2020 happening. Yep. And and I'm Doug I met in 2020. When um, did you guys meet? In 2020. But before yeah. or after we did when did when did we meet doug it was in um it was it would be after because you knew glenn before you knew me i think oh it was it at, at gittimer's yeah yeah at gittimer's house ken and, and i met in february and um we're, we're coming up on a year anniversary honey dude i know what'd you get yeah, me how about that <laughs> Oh geez! What did you say? What am I going to get you? I said, "What did you get me?" Not well, what did I get you? I'll give you a punch right, in the mouth is what I get you. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> what? What? I was reading comments. I said, "I'll get you a punch in the mouth." That's what I'll I, get thought, you. I thought. That I you remember. I you remember that. when your buddy used to go, "I'll give you a fish sandwich." <laughs> It was always that goofball. It's like, I'll give you a fish sandwich. What are you so happy about, fella? <laughs> yeah, right. People, well, you wonder how much time, what, what thought that Denzel looks old. He does in that movie. He looks, yes, he does. Well, he's 66. He's not a spring chicken. That's not that old. No, I know that. But I mean, we're used to the young Denzel hopping around and things change and, you know. All right. He's still a great actor. All right. All right. All right. He's a great actor. He is a great actor. I agree. Um, so, yes, we met Justin Benton in 2020, but we haven't met, met Justin. Us through, I've met both of them. Hey, mastermind. Justin. Isn't that so incredible, though, is all these people who are really prominent in our lives are people that a year ago we didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know. It's crazy, man. And here but we I, not I, only are with each other, but we love each other. Yes, we do. And I, I got to tell you what I let me finish what I was saying about 2020 and all of the things that have happened. And I had my very first first time ever couple of things because of you, Glenn. I had very first movie star ever in the history of my life, got on airplane and surprise visited me as I'm not staying in Nashville, driving through Nashville and, and freaking goes behind my back and gets my wife involved in this big scheme and right. she's screaming at me in the car to pull off the interstate because she has to go. And I'm looking at her like she's like an alien. Who in the hell are you? And what'd you do with my wife? And 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 then there you are. You said and all oh, for a hug. And all for a hug, man. And and the hottest food that you've ever had in your life at that that place. Mm -hmm. And then then I got to be in a private screening of your new movie with Denzel with you and and a group of your students and friends and and dude, it was. And now you know John Schneider. And now I know John Schneider. I know my new BFF, Brad Leland. Right. <laughs> right. I'm not threatened. I'm very secure in our love. <laughs> very secure. Uh, but we dude, both John introduced Schneider. each other to a lot of people. You know, you yeah. brought your best of your best to me, and I've done the same with you. How about Yasmin? Let's not overlook uh, that gem. Yasmin. Yasmin is a gem. Cat Franco Cat is. Franco, I was getting ready to say. I you're mean, talking about top shelf entertainment right there. Those two, dude, some amazing people. And 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 Doug Wing. Look at Doug Wing. My God, <laughs> my life is blessed. I am blessed, man. Jonathan Dawson. Wait till you meet Jonathan, dude. You're going to like, I've never met Jonathan in person. I've had conversations with him on the phone. 
He is literally, and I mean literally, one of the most, you'll see. He's one of Liam the most Neeson. spiritually advanced people you'll ever know. Liam like you, Neeson, who's 70 and still dangerous. I have a special set of skills. <laughs> and I will track you down. And I will use them. Right. And I will kill you. Right. Yeah, he was dangerous in those movies. Wow. Denzel looks good on Glenn's pizza. <laughs> yeah, he does. I told him I put him on my pizza. I was they were doing using Oh, duck. look at that. Oh, nice. Yeah, the little hyena. Little, you little, have one of those and one of those little step stools, the jumbo. That's what they use in that store in the stores. Dude, okay. you guys make the best ladders in the world. I mean, you literally do. I've 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 used other ladders. The little giant ladders are the best, period. And of the we finally get to meet Delilah in 2021. Do we? Is it gonna happen? That might have been a reference to Christina because her voice sounds so much like Delilah. Mm. Maybe that's the surprise guest. Jonathan says I'm better in person. <laughs> hey, Doug, curiously, on your old business cards with an exclamation point at the end, does it say, see you later? <laughs> <laughs> Did it say, see you later? No, it didn't. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> I never thought that would be good. Yeah, that would have been really good. See you later. That would have been good, actually. <laughs> or well, even catch you later. Yeah, that's, yeah, really, really That would have been the version in the 70s. What? Listen, Justin says I'm on it with look, here's the deal. Okay. In Glenn's dead cell phone, it's dead, right? Well, it's charging. Well, no, not now. I've got it sitting here charging. Oh. <clears throat> In Glenn's freshly charged cell phone, mm -hmm. he literally has how many, how many like it's super it's, a, it's a who's who of celebrities. It's like literally, he can pick up the phone. And call Arnold Schwarzenegger and get him on the phone. Or he can call Marina Canacarides. Did I say her name right? Canacarides? You did good. Is it Canacarides? Yes. Canacarides. Wow. I mean, all of these amazing big names. And little Delilah in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or wherever she is. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> little Delilah. <laughs> That Glenn could definitely have helped her career. Oh, by the way, can I let out a pet peeve right now? <laughs> yes. Someone just sent me, this is just a random pet peeve. Someone just sent me question marks. I don't oh, like that. I don't like question marks. That's all it, they sent? In other words, it was in response to a text that had not been returned at the speed they require. Hmm. Huh. So the next text is question marks. Not Mark. Did I say Mark? No. Marks. As in like six of them. Wow. And I know what it means. It means you're not living your life according to the schedule. I would have you live your life to meet my needs. That's what it means. It means you're not responding. You can just send someone a text and you can let them respond. And then if not, you might check back after a while, maybe a day or two later, and just say, just checking to make sure you're okay, that everything's okay. I wanted to mention that such and such, please call when you have time or holler at me when you have time. You don't have to go question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I'll keep the question marks in mind when I need to get your attention next well, time. No, I mean, I really wanted people to take a look at it because it's rude. Yeah. It, it is actually a very rude thing. It is, it is, it is stockpiled with insistence. Yeah. It's it in, it, you're insisting that they get back with you like right now. And so, here's the thing. The people who really know you and really love you, they don't pull that nonsense. They don't do that. Somebody referred this um, millennial to me the other day in an email, and and I had <clears throat> I hadn't requested um, information 
Um, John, do you see what John said? Let me make it even more rude. But yeah, that's even more rude, dude. Uh, but you know, they said they referred this. Or are you going to show me John's comment or are you just going to yeah, read it? Yeah, here. Right. <laughs> well, that's not that's not just rude that's just confusing as hell <laughs> but but well, that's you know what that's like that's like insistence what insistence what insistence what well like, so know, <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, oh my god oh my god Oh, uh, anyway, so he refers this, this millennial to me, holy shit. And, 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 and this, this kid immediately responds and it was for me to do business with this millennial. And this kid immediately responds, Ken, nice to meet you. What are your goals for 2021? <laughs> uh, can we and say, I'm, premature engagulation. I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, that's premature engagulation right there. Is what that is. So I immediately, my first thought was, oh, one of them is to not talk to people like you. <laughs> so, my goal, my goal is to never allow someone like you into my life. But but I, thought, I just thought, okay, this is referred <laughs> by a really good friend of mine, a good guy. And I just want to, uh, I, I just, I, I'm going to let this, and I've been slammed busy and, and I, so it's in my inbox, I'll get back to it. And so I didn't, didn't respond. And then like four days go by and this kid responds again. And he says to the guy who referred me, oh, well, oh, pretend the guy that referred him to me, pretend the guy's name is Glenn. <clears throat> And he says in the email, hey, Glenn, could you give Ken a nudge for me? Question mark, exclamation point. And then I got pissed off. And I said, wow, what can I do for you, young man? And that, that was it. And then he responds, never mind. I just thought maybe you had goals. Hit me up if you got it, if you or had goals for this, this certain thing. Uh, hit me up if, and I'm like, wow, what, what? So I promptly just went click, delete, and moved on with my life. But you, the, the, the what John just put the question mark, exclamation point. He literally put that in the freaking email. And I was like, what in God's name? Like, first off, hey, Glenn, nice to meet you. What are your goals for this year? <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's why they made the delete key in life. Oh, my God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and his question, what what's your fitness goals for 2021? Oh, my God. Melinda, go, down, go down to Justin's latest too after this one. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I just man, I, I think <laughs> and that's why I love my Justin. I love me some Justin. Oh, I can't get enough of Justin. Dude, you should have heard Justin because Mark was playing the the oh, day yeah. music. He Mark Rodriguez was playing right. the day game music on yes. the last night and justin was there he was the whatever they're called the host the host yeah so justin's going welcome to the dating game and we have and, and he's just, i mean it was wasn't it great doug it was hilarious yeah oh, was what did they what did they call the room the dating game, the dating dating game. game. are you looking for love question mark yeah we'll oh my gosh. we'll invite glenn next time for sure. I did, I did invite, I hit the invite thing. I, I don't know. It was I'm last sorry. time, but anyway. Just ping, ping Glenn next time too, Justin. <laughs> okay. look, look at the exclamations. No, exclamation marks don't, I want to, I want to be real clear about this. Those don't make my pet peeve. It's, it's the question mark, question mark, question mark. Right. Right. Hey, hey um, uh, Ken, did I tell you that story when I was still at Little Giant from that millennial he came in? We were hiring in production at Little Giant. Uh -uh. 
and he comes in and he goes, so if I get this job, do I have to get sweaty? And we're like, you're going to be building ladders. I mean, you know, you're going to be running presses and oh, yeah, you're going to get really sweaty. And he goes, okay, I'm just going to go find another job where I don't have to get sweaty. And he gets up and walks out. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the response. Yeah. Um, and he left. All right. I don't want to get sweaty. Okay. I don't, I don't so much want to get sweaty. So I'm going to go bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Oh my goodness. When you've set off a fury of question marks now. <laughs> no, really. Like, look at Justin. I know he's playing. Yeah. But when you look at that, what if he had sent you a text two hours ago and then your next text, push that, put that back up. Here's your next text two hours later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does that feel? Oh, I know, man. I no, but I mean, let, let's talk about it for a minute. What does that feel like to you? Because I want a group consensus. What is what is being said there? Dude, what in the hell's wrong with you? Why won't you respond to my text message? That's verbatim what it says. Yeah. It's exactly what it says. It I'll tell you what it doesn't say. Are you are you okay? I hope that everything's all right in your life. Yeah. I love you. It doesn't say that. And it really should be stricken from people's approach. It is not bad communication. It's terrible communication and it is egocentric in nature because it insists that the world respond to your precious schedule yeah and it makes no room to consider what someone else might be doing like they might be having a life <laughs> right. i mean what a concept i don't know about you but i don't sit around obsessing over who needs me on the phone that's not my life <laughs> I interpret it as, would you like coffee, cookies, or cake when we meet up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, Ken, I'm going to lead and go. I'm going to leave and go take up smoking that's, weed or something. That's what, it, that's what it means, right there, dude. That's yeah. exactly what it means. That's what they think. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Justin, I'm going to, I'm going to differ slightly and change that to from I'm more important because the person who sent that does not feel that way. I know it, but what it does imply is my needs are more important. Mm. I don't know if it implies I'm more important. Wait, before we sign off, I want to see how Justin feels about my interpretation of my needs are more important yeah. than yours versus I I'm more important. Hey, do I get to play our outro video? Well, you sure. Should. But I want to I want to get Justin because you know I love me some Justin. I want to know what his feedback is. I'm gonna wait. But I, I when I started, I Has said he responded yet? No. Let me go to the chat. I think he's still on there, yeah. When I started, I said I didn't get the memo about my Friday night show being canceled. So Yeah, yeah. I heard. You heard that? Damn right, I heard it. You were listening the whole time? I heard that. Jonathan <laughs> Jonathan said, I agree with that interpretation. Justin said, my time is more important. Yeah. 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 And so, Lynn Toronto. Hey, whoever, Lynn. hey Lenners, whoever, uh, whoever's listening tonight, just keep that in mind. Uh, the next time you pull that whole question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> um, before you pull that. Push yourself on the receiving end of it and see what it feels like. Because it 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 doesn't feel good. It feels very controlling and very insistent. I agree, dude. And it, and what's interesting is I had actually planned to respond to that, and I have not responded. And when I get something like that, that actually postpones my response. For a whole nother couple, maybe two, three days. Well, just because and now I feel like uh, I've got somebody snapping, you know, they're cracking a whip about what schedule I need to be on. And I think that that should not exist between people. I agree, dude. And especially when, when the matter isn't urgent, it's just an urge. It's a desire to talk. Well, that's not a great way. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't motivate people to do that. So I understand if my agent needs a response regarding a job, Hey Glenn, can you holler at me ASAP please? Right. And, and I understand what's going on. 
<laughs> was the I am not going to explore that because I, I'm not trying to out anybody. I'm just saying it's a terrible habit. No matter who's doing it, that is a habit that could be dropped immediately and you would be better off in your friendships without it. There's a lot of things like that. You and I, I think we should devote a show to that, yeah. Ken, about basically things that have become part of our sort of um, behavioral vernacular, if you will, and people are, it's commonplace, but the fact that it's commonplace does not make it okay. There are a lot of things, people, that that they do, and it really does not make for a harmonious world, and yet it occurs all the time. I I have to, before we go, I have to say hello to my amazing, beautiful, dear friend, Leilani Moore. Glenn, she lives out in L.A. Hi, Leilani. I know who Leilani is. We've talked about her. You and I talked about her this week. Did we see her somewhere? No, but she, her name came up and I said, isn't that the girl who's such and such? And you said, why? Yes, she is. Leilani. Yes. I don't remember talking about Leilani this week, but anyway, well, you sometimes don't remember that I love you, but I do. <laughs> what does she do? I always every night when I lay my head on the pillow, as I'm saying my prayers, I thank God for your love and Doug's love. Oh, wow. That's nice. But anyway, I, wow. I yeah, if you're ever Not like I need to step up my gratitude. <laughs> wow, thanks for stopping by, Glenn. <laughs> Ken, what does Le- Leilani do? You know I love you, Bubba. I love you too, man. Um Leilani is Leilani, what are you doing now? I I she she um she is in a fa- I know she was in a family business in um Gosh, I think the Beverly Hills area. I'm not sure exactly where because I don't know L.A. that well. But um, with a lot of property management, rental properties and stuff. But I don't know. We haven't talked in a little bit. We haven't talked in months, actually. Oh, she's still in real estate. Good. Excellent. Yeah, she's awesome. She is awesome. Love. Gentlemen, I am going to go and finish up my uh, in and out lemonade. And uh, I love you, brother. I love you too, man. Have love a beautiful you. weekend, Dougie. Always a pleasure. Listen, best of luck with you. Have you already gotten yourself a place down there in Phoenix? Yes. Yeah. You're looking at the, the house it's right beautiful. now. What, what what part of Phoenix did you get placed in your Camelback? In, no, I'm in Chandler, which is right. I know by, where Chandler is. Yeah, Gilbert area, Chandler area. Yep. Nice. I, now, uh, what motivated that move other than weather? Do you have any people you know down there or... Yes, I have some friends down here and um, mostly the weather, though, really. And, uh, you know, I just got divorced. And so just kind of a new start. And uh, it's a change of scenery might be really healthy for you. That might be really what the doctor ordered. Just a total fresh, clean slate, you know. That's what I'm hoping for. It's always a pleasure, Glenn. I appreciate Uh, you so much. Yeah, absolutely, brother. So your uh, all your cars and all that are still up there, though, right? They're still up there, yes. And where is that? Is that at your house where that big garage is? No, that's at Little Giants. Uh, look at Ken's background. <laughs> oh, that's nice. At, that's at the Little Giant um, corporate headquarters, which my brother and I still own the building. Oh, They're gotcha. Trying to move so all the cars will show. So what are you What are you doing with the house up there? Are you going to sell it or? I sold it. I've already oh, sold it. Oh, you already it. did sell it? Yes. So wow. Wow. This is going to be permanent unless it's too hot in the summer. Then, then I may have to go find another place for three or four months. Well, if you think about it, everything in life is permanent until it isn't. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Leilani says, "Where are you?" That's that's Doug's garage and his cars and <laughs> and and that's Leonardo DiCaprio's beach house. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Ken, I told you that I read for a Leonardo DiCaprio movie the other day, didn't I? No, did you really? I truly did. I truly did. Two days ago. Uh, wow, that's cool. Uh, actually, let me see. It's Friday. Uh, yes, two days ago. It was on Wednesday. Wow, dude. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio and and the guy I've always made the joke about, about name dropping. That's the other actor. Um. um, um, um Come um, on. Hold on. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's um, 
let me help you. I won't name it, but I say it this way. I go, you know who taught me not to name drop? Yes. You can't think of it. No. Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro. Yeah, so he and Leonardo DiCaprio are doing a movie, and uh, and maybe maybe your old buddy Morshower will pop in this thing. Dude. We'll see. Wow. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Would we'll it be see. a decent decent sized part? I mean, it's it's okay. It's not huge, but the director would be the reason to do it. Dude. The director is a very well known director. It's it it would be a great thing. That's awesome, bro. And it shoots in uh in the neighboring state of Oklahoma. Wow. Mm hmm So that, that wouldn't be upsetting. Just make sure that that you don't book any movies or TV shows or anything for like April 15th, 16th, 17th, because I'll be in Dallas. Okay. Just make just tell them to, you know, put it off for something, delay filming or whatever. So <laughs> what are you doing down here? I'm speaking. At a conference. But what is the conference? It's a conference that I'm speaking at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken, you, that's when you said I should come down for, right? Yeah, it's called um, Connect. And it's uh, my buddy. And they're going to push through no matter COVID or anything. They're pushing through. Oh, yeah. And my buddy Chaz um, Wilson is the CEO of the of the company. Um, nice. And yeah, he... he, uh, he they There will be... I don't somewhere between 250 to 400 people, I think in the audience. Wow. And then, like 3000 on the live stream, potentially. I don't know how many people actually will be there. Mark Victor Hansen is going to be speaking there too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, so I know that I'm getting back from Atlanta like that week. So let's hope it works out that I'm back. Oh, dude, I hope so, man. I, I mean, I, I think it'll be that. I think I probably get back around the exact day that you come in. Well, dude, if, if there's a any kind of a problem, I'll just call Fox Network. Yeah, I'm adjusted. That, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great for my future. Not... <clears throat> Um, I, I do want to give the show a plug. Uh, I do want to give the show a plug. This this Tuesday night's episode of The Resident is my favorite one that I've ever done. Whoa. This Tuesday. In four it, seasons. This it's, is a, it's a big one. Wow. So uh, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, and Pacific. Wow. This Tuesday on Fox Television. And let's not forget to plug our Sunday night show one more time. The Ken and Glenn show with a guy named Scott. And we will be on at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern on this Sunday. week. That's 3 p.m. Central and uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. We 2 p.m. Mountain time. Yeah. Mountain time always gets left out, which is unfortunate because that's, you know, Salt Lake is mountain time. Half the year, Phoenix is mountain time. Yeah. No, we, we switched. Um, we, we dropped daylight savings, Glenn. Okay, which means you're oh, we're mountain we're mountain time the mountain entire. throughout. Yep. Oh, it's no more half the year. Nope. Okay. Yeah, they don't they don't change it. Wow. Okay, yeah, so you went from mountain time to mountain time with a lot more sun and warmth. Right. Yeah. Right, which is awesome. Yeah. Gentlemen, <laughs> thank you for welcoming me into your uh, into your show tonight, dude. It's our show. No, I was, but I yeah, mean, you yeah, guys was, were doing your thing, and I popped in, and and I'm grateful. It's by it's nice to be back on the air with you Fridays, and I'm sorry about my clubhouse absence, but it's beginning to fade. I think the honeymoon is over. With clubhouse, <laughs> with clubhouse, yeah, I do. You know, I I heard um I heard that that Grant Grant Cardone said that it's and it, I agree, dude. It could be. For for some people, it could lit. I noticed it for me, like just a freaking time suck. And it's like, oh my god, where's the return on the investment for me? You know, in time, and you know, there's some amazing people on there, but my gosh, it's uh, it can be a time. Yeah, break. it's it's a controlled substance. It kind of is. No, it is. I mean, you got to control it, otherwise, it's a problem because you can just lose so much time. And it, you don't even notice it, which is the no. Point. And it, the point is, it is fun. It's engaging, and 
but at the same time, here's the other thing. You got to be careful about taking on people's too much energy from, from the different stories. It can, it can weigh very heavy on your heart, you know? Yeah. That maybe that maybe that is where it, I don't remember that. But you know, that's the other thing is on Clubhouse. Yeah, Justin saying see you in a room soon. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna wait another 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's called pacing myself. Glenn's <laughs> like, no, you won't. <laughs> All right. You know, hey. I laugh at it, but that's exactly right. What you just did. That's exactly right. It's terrible. The only reason I've even gotten through this show is because I have Clubhouse intravenously fed into my ankle right now. <laughs> I couldn't do it up here because I didn't want you to see the feed line. <laughs> you even know what it's called. Oh my God. Doug's like, what's a feed line? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm on a strong feed line right now. My ankles are getting a hit oh my <laughs> <gosh>. <laughs> off of Clubhouse. Hey, did you see where Mark Zuckerberg was on Clubhouse? No. No. Ugh. No, I don't Some care. People are talking about it. I don't know what that means, but anyway. Huh. What is this? I'm listening to Kim.com. They're trying to figure out if he if he's willing to spend a billion dollars to buy it. Their valuation and just since April. Wait, read what? Can you read that out loud before you shut us off? And then we can go into our next half hour. Go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> com talking internet on Clubhouse. I'm with y'all. It's overwhelming and needs to be niche rooms. Uh, what, what, what do you mean, John, by niche rooms? I, I mean, I know what the word niche means, but what do you mean by there needs to be niche rooms? Glenn, Can John say more on that? He knows the verbiage. He doesn't work in the hospital in the resident, though. No, I'm too busy owning it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hell no, we're not buying new feed lines. I don't even know what that means. No. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm not approving that 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 order. Okay, John is coming now. All focused discussion. I do agree, man. There's, yeah, there's okay. I got you. A small focus discussion, John. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm good night, I'm, boys. I'm, I'm Hi. over. Glenn. Now, Great to see you, so. Glenn. Nice to see you, Dougie. Congrats on uh, the relocation, brother. Thank God you. God bless you. And I, and I, I'm just holding the, uh, holding the knowing that things are good for you and that it's going to get great and just, Trust that the interesting things are already swirling and coming your way. Yeah, it's going to be wonderful. I appreciate that, those words. Thank you, sir. You betcha. Hey, one more thing, dude. Yeah. Before we go, I'm sorry, Doug. Doug's like, I'm Oh, you want to put our tape on. That's what you want to do. I'm going to, yeah. But one more thing. I was in a clubhouse room for about 10 five, hours. Five minutes. No. Oh, okay. Maybe five minutes listening Maybe 10. And then this somebody woman, referred to themselves in third person eight times in five minutes. This woman says, and it, it had, I don't know, a couple hundred people in it. And this woman says, um, oh, let me reset the room. Listen, everybody in the audience, um, all of y'all really need to follow the moderators. We're up here donating our time to you. And we're, you know, you need to follow us. We're, we're giving this for free. And, and I'm thinking, how about we all get together and build a bridge so you can get over yourself? How about that? Oh, oh that's nice. Did you hear, have you ever heard my don't follow speech? It's, no. it's the opposite of that. And I go, hey, so a lot of people are saying follow everybody that's up here. Hey, why don't you not? <laughs> I have. I said it today in my room. I said, let me give you a better thought. Why don't you ask yourself if you're drawn to someone? And if you're drawn, then follow them. And if, if you're not, there's no need. Yeah. You, you, but, you don't need to do that. And it lets people off the hook, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, Leilani, I do not say that. So it's not true that they say it in every room because I specifically tell people. Oh, are you still there? Yeah. You just muted. You went for a second. Well, that was weird. Yeah, that's really weird. It switched microphones. Now he's muted again. Now you're muted. There you go. Yeah, I don't hear you, dude. 
<laughs> That's weird. That's God. How about weird. now? Yeah, we hear you. Yeah. You can? Yeah. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. I think weird, something dude. happened to this. Uh, here, let me try it again. Wow. wow. Are you guys frozen? No. Hold on. I'm going to put on a different set of earbuds. I think those earbuds just tanked, Kenny. No. That's weird. Hold on. Those, I, I just sent him those earbuds. Those are brand new. Oh, you know what? Uh, that wasn't the earbuds. There's something going on with my Yeti mic. Huh. Well, hey, we're ending it anyway, so... Okay. Yeah, there's something going on with it. it it's acting up. So, I'll tell you, all right, you're going to play our show out? I'll help you with it. Yeah. I'll help. All right, bud. We'll see you guys, Doug. See you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. See you guys later. Join us Sunday, 4 o'clock Eastern, for the Ken and Glenn show with a guy named Scott. We'll see you guys. Have a great night. Bye bye. Thank you.